This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Good day to you. Let's talk a little bit about Judge Eileen Cannon, Trump appointee who just this weekend allowed Donald Trump his request of having a special master applied to the case to go through the evidence that the government recovered, evidence that was not his, thousands of uh, sensitive documents, many hundreds top secret, hundreds classified, secret. And uh, someone who Donald Trump put into her position who is making rulings outside of her jurisdiction and is being um, <laughs> mocked mightily. Her, she's being criticized appropriately by legal experts and scholars. And I'm gonna read a little bit, and then I'm gonna play a clip from Bill Barr, no shrinking violet, no liberal thought leader, about his thoughts about this entire thing. Spoiler alert, he agrees with me. Spoiler alert, he, for some reason, is on the right side of this particular issue. I'm gonna read from this article uh, from The Week. Legal scholars criticize judges laughably bad ruling in favor of Trump's special master request. U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon on Monday granted former President Donald Trump's request. He's the ex-president, but you know, not everybody's gonna get it right. Ex-President Donald Trump's request for a third-party special master to review the more than 11,000 documents federal agents took from his Mar-a-Lago residence under a search warrant on August 8th, separating out any that might violate attorney-client privilege or executive privilege. Executive privilege would not apply here, not just for the fact that he is no longer president of the United States, he's the ex-POTUS, ex-POTUS. Joe Biden has already ruled that a non-issue. Executive privilege does not apply here. It has been waived by the current occupant of the White House and holder of uh, and decider of what is executive privilege and what is not. Cannon, nominated by Trump in 2020 and confirmed after his electoral defeat, also ordered the Justice Department to stop using the documents for investigative purposes in its criminal probe of Trump's handling of highly classified government documents. She did, however, allow a parallel uh, intelligence community review of potential national security harm from the storage of top secret documents in a non-secure public club. In a country club not a secure intelligence document facility. Legal scholars, and here we're getting to the, to the crux of this, is the criticism of this judge, who, by the way, has little to no, no experience as a judge, but her, her, her legal uh, CV, her, her resume is thin. I mean, I have about as much experience as a lawyer as her. Legal scholars called Cannon's ruling unprecedented in the sense that it goes against decades of court precedent, especially expanding the special master role to include executive privilege, potentially claimed by former president, over the executive branch for government-owned documents, the Justice Department argues Trump had no right to take or keep in the first place. Here's a quote, this was an unprecedented intervention by a federal district judge into the middle of an ongoing federal criminal and national security investigation. University of Texas law professor Steve Vladek told the New York Times, in joining the ongoing criminal investigation is simply untenable, agreed Paul Rosenweig, a George W. Bush administration official. So this isn't even just liberal Democrats who are, who are concerned about this overreach from the judge. This is conservatives. This, this is Republicans also. Here's another one. To any lawyer with serious federal criminal court experience who is being honest, this ruling 
is laughably bad. And the written justification is even flimsier, said Duke University law professor Samuel Buell. He also told that to the Times. Um, Donald Trump is getting something no one else ever gets in federal court. He's getting it for no good reason, and it will not in the slightest reduce the ongoing howls that he is being prosecuted when he is being privileged. Um, Former Attorney General, here we go. I'm going to read a quote and play a clip here. Former Attorney General William Barr was more blunt. Quote, I think it's a crock of shit, he told the Times on Friday. I don't think a special master is called for. He made similar comments to Fox News, arguing that a special master is a waste of time and the FBI appears totally justified in seizing the documents. That is Donald Trump's own former hand-picked attorney general, the man who he believed would extricate him from all of his, his problems. Remember, he had multiple attorneys general. Bill Barr was just the, the last of them not counting acting and everything else after Bill Barr quit. Here is Bill Barr on Fox News. And by the way, I just want to remind you, lay this at your feet for, for chewing on. These are the, the, this is the news side of Fox News. These are not the pundits. These are not the entertainment class of Fox News. These are supposed to be the hard journalists asking ridiculous questions of the former Attorney General, Trump's former Attorney General. Watch this. Such recklessness that it's almost worse than taking the documents. To that point, though, um, there's there's some questions over the timeline. Uh, and there are some who fall in the camp of this was, you know, looking at the unprecedented nature of a raid of a former president's home like this, that perhaps there was more room for the authorities to obtain these materials without raiding the president's home while he was not even there. Do you think this type of um, this raid was was avoidable? Do you think a second subpoena, for example, could have been issued? Well, I think there, whether the raid was reasonable under the circumstances, whether there's in fact a case to be made, and, and whether or not as a matter of prudential judgment that case should be brought depend on two questions. The, the character of those top secret documents and secret documents, how sensitive were they? Uh, and and uh, uh, second, how raw is the evidence of deceit and obstruction. Do they have really good evidence from people who were involved? Of what do you deceit? think the answer to that is? I personally think for them to have taken things to the current point, they probably have pretty good evidence. But that's speculation. And until we see that, it's hard to say. Now, let me just say, uh, I think the driver on this from the beginning was, the, was, you know, loads of classified information sitting in Mar-a-Lago. People say this was unprecedented. Well, it's also unprecedented for a president to take all this classified information and put him in a country club. OK. And how, how long is the government going to uh, try to get that back? You know, they jawbone for a year. They were deceived on the voluntary uh, actions taken. Uh, they then went and got a subpoena. They were deceived on that. Uh, they feel. And the record, the facts are starting to show that they were being jerked around. And, and so how long, you know, how long do they wait? Yeah. Couldn't a, a second subpoena have been issued? If they're not paying attention to the first or treating the first with the deference it deserves, why would a second subpoena all of a sudden wake them up and like, oh, we better abide by the authority of the Department of Justice and this grand jury issuing a subpoena? Journalist asking that question. To which Bill Barr said it plainly, bluntly, and accurately, I think the driver on this from the beginning was loads of classified information sitting in Mar-a-Lago. People say this was unprecedented. Well, it's also unprecedented for a president to take all this classified information and put them in a country club. Bill Barr, again, no bleeding heart liberal. He is a fascist enabler, made excuses for gassing peaceful protesters. I need a vacation. <laughs> so anyway, the next step here, this is what we're waiting on, is to see what the Justice Department will or won't do relative to an appeal to this decision for a judge who's making decisions out of, of, of territory, 
It's not even in our jurisdiction. And making a category of defendant unique unto himself, meaning Donald Trump. No one, no one, no one would get the treatment that Donald Trump is getting right now, if not for the fact that he's Donald Trump. Executive privilege does not apply, although it's being, it's being talked about. A special master who is only going to slow the process down is, is being talked about. I mean, it is beyond the pale. Ex potus obstructing justice. And, you know, maybe this judge has a little answering to do relative to obstructing justice in this case. What do you think? I'd love to know. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me, daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to see you on social media. I'm at dollamore all over the place. And if I bring you value, please consider supporting my work. Click the join button below this video. For as little as $1.99 a month, you can join in the mission of this program, helping protect and preserve our democracy right here in this country. You can also go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. That's not just for the podcast. It absolutely supports the work that I do on here on YouTube. And for what that's worth, if you haven't subscribed and you don't listen to my podcast, my twice weekly podcast with my lovely, talented and scholarly, wonderful co-host, Brittany Page, you really should. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.